Hi everyone, so today's quick tip video is not a craft video, it's just another spreadsheet video. So just over four years or so ago, I made myself a monthly budget, which I still use to this day. And when I'd made the budget, I'd been using it for a few months and I knew that it was working for me, I thought I'd share how to make a simple budget on YouTube. So the budget that I made in the video wasn't the same as mine. It was kind of loosely based around you know a monthly household budget if you like but the principles I used in it uh, I used in my spreadsheet and I still use today but mine kind of look different but I posted that video just thinking that you know I'm not an expert I'd worked out how to make this spreadsheet kind of work for me and I posted it thinking it may or may not help somebody well that video which is just over four years old has had over or I think just under 68,000 views which is mind-boggling really considering I'm a craft channel and people have left messages saying they loved it and they've used it and they adapted it for them. Anyway I, I love using spreadsheets but like I say I'm not an expert I just kind of create a spreadsheet for a task that I want to do basically so I've been doing some product shares recently in my stamping up business and I, I wanted a way of keeping track of when somebody paid me kind of how much money was still outstanding. So I made a simple little budget using the IF formula, IF. So I just thought I'd show you how to do it. It's probably easier to see it to make you understand it than be trying to explain how to use it. But the IF is a function that's available in like Windows Excel and obviously it's available in Pages which is Mac which is what I use. So I just thought I'd show you how to create this simple little spreadsheet using Mac numbers and hope that it might help somebody. So I've opened up my numbers app and I've gone over to where it says basic and these are like the basic templates that are in my numbers program. So I'm guessing that you'll probably have the same. So I'm just choosing this first white that's called blank. There's one that's got like a dark background and one that's got like a white background. That's the one I'm choosing. So I've got it selected. I'm gonna choose create. So just before I go any further, if I just hop over to my channel, this is my Apple Lover 53 YouTube channel. And if I just extend this page out a bit so that the magnifying glass opens up. And in here, if I type budget on my keyboard and hit enter, this is the budget video I made. You can see it's four years old and it's had 67,000. It's just short of 68,000. And as I say, my, my monthly budget that I still use looks different to this, but the kind of functions that I showed how to do in that video still apply today to my spreadsheet. So I'm just going to close that down. So this is now a blank page. Let me just make it a bit smaller. And this is how my blank page comes in. Now, I don't know if this is the same for everybody's Apple numbers spreadsheet, but I find that if I have things in this top row and things in this first column where it's automatically highlighted, the functions that I then put in other columns don't always work. So I just get into the habit of selecting this first row by clicking on its number. And then on the drop down arrow that, that shows up, I choose delete row. So I get rid of that top row. Then I click on the column letter up here. And again, you've got the drop down arrow and I choose delete column. And then I find that the spreadsheets work better for me. As I say, I don't know if that applies to everybody. It's just something I've found. So up here, you've got table name, which is automatically in by default. So you can put whatever you want in there. So let's just type in how to use the if function in Apple numbers. Okay, so that's my heading. So off to the side of the screen that you can't see, I've got one of these already open with some, you know, random bits of information. So I'm just going to copy and paste those in to this worksheet just so you can see 
how it works. So I'm going to leave the top line blank for now and I'm going to start here and I'm just going to click paste and that's just bringing in the information from the worksheet that's off on off the screen that you can't see. I'm just copying and pasting into this video into this spreadsheet just to save some time. Okay, so I've just got some random names and some random amounts, but as I say, I was using mine for some product shares that I've been doing and I just wanted a way of keeping track of how much the, the, the product shares were in total you know for all the customers that ordered and then I wanted like a, a reducing total when the person paid so as you can see I've got names and random amounts here these are just something I've just literally just made up before I started doing this screen recording and then I've put a total in. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add up these amounts. So I'm going to click in this box here and I'm going to use the equal sign on my keyboard and that's going to bring up this, this box. From when I you know, was researching my budget that I wanted to make four years ago, there weren't an awful lot of Apple numbers videos out there. So that's why I'm just doing this one again. So as I say, I've selected this box next to where I've put total and I want it to add up these figures for me. So all that I'm going to do now is click in the first box and then drag down and you can see over on the right hand side here, it's put B2 to B7. So they're the columns and I'm going to tick yes because that's what I want. I want it to add up these columns for me. So now in the next column along, I want tick boxes. And basically what, what the way I was using mine, so one of my recent product shares was something like £22.95. So I would have had like £22.95 in here. And then I wanted a tick box that was blank when the money was outstanding, but I wanted to be able to put a tick in it when it was paid. And then I wanted a reduce in balance so that I could see how much was still outstanding, if that makes sense. So I've selected this next box in this column here. And over on the right hand side, I'm going to go where it says cell. And then it says data format. And at the moment, by default, I think it always shows as automatic. I want a tick box. So I'm going to select the downward facing arrow. And then if you come down here, there's all different things that you can formulate, which I'll, I'll go back to the money in a minute and show you that. Um, but it's brought over the money because I've copied and pasted it, as I say, from something I've just got off screen. But I'm going to come down to tick box. And that puts a, a checkbox here for me. And I want checkboxes now in all these amounts with the names in. So when I select it and hover over it, you'll see there's a yellow circle underneath. If I drag that down now, every box I drag it down to, to it will put a checkbox in. I don't want one in the total. I just want to be able to say, yes, you know, Mr. Smith paid £200 or Mr. Lawson paid 15, okay? And then I want it to give me some kind of result here, okay? So where I've got total here, I've got total for all these amounts. In this column here, I'm going to write outstanding, okay? And then just going back to the amounts, again, if you come up to the cell box, you can see here that I think by default, they show up as a number, and I wanted mine to be currency. So I changed it to currency. And then again, I did the circle and dragged it all down so that these all became currency. But the if function is what I want to explain today. So basically what I want now is I want all the amounts here to be the same as here. So if I select all these and right click and copy and then come over here and right click and paste and then again I want the total so I could copy the formula from here but I'm going to do it separately so I know that it's going to work so I'm going to highlight this box again I'm going to hit the equals key on my keyboard that brings up this box and then I'm going to highlight those rows and say yes so I've now got 
total 1100 and outstanding 1100. I want this outstanding amount to reduce as and when these elements are paid. So for me, as I say, mine was a product share. Obviously, it was no, it, it wasn't eleven hundred pounds. But I wanted to know that when I checked off the people that had paid, how much was still outstanding, and that's where the if function comes in. I'm going to select the first amount on the first row, and I'm going to type equals to bring up this this function box. And I'm going to type the word if, and straight away it brings up the if commands. And it's the first one I want. So when I select it, it gives me this. So basically this is if something is something, then I want something. I hope that makes sense. So I'm going to, so you've got your if, and it says if expression, if true, if false. So I'm going to click on expression and basically what I want what I want to say is if this is checked I want this box to show a zero so I go to if true and type zero and then I click on if false I want it to show as 200 and then I say yes and then hopefully that's worked so now, if I hover over the first box and drag down that yellow dot again, that function that I've put in here will show up in every column. So if you look at the first one, I'm selecting this, and down here at the bottom it says, if C20, B2, close brackets. If I click on row four, it says, if C40, B4, so C4, this is the column C and it's row four. So that formula has transferred now to every row, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna highlight these. I'm gonna come over to the right where it says text. I'm gonna change the text to red. I'm gonna make it bold and I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger under the point size here, okay? Just so it kind of stands out. So basically now, if Mr. Smith is invoice is £200 and he's not paid me, it shows us £200 and the total of all the invoices is 1100 and at the moment the total of the outstanding is 1100 But if Mr. Smith pays me and I just left click in this box to put a check in it, you'll see straight away that the amount here goes to zero, so that shows there's nothing outstanding and it's reduced my 1100 amount to 900, so it's reduced it by the 200. So if you know, for instance, you've got 1100 pounds worth of invoices outstanding and somebody pays you 200 pound, then you can see straight away you've got 900 outstanding. If I tick this one here against Wilkinson, 10 pound, you can see that the 10 pound outstanding has disappeared to zero and the balance outstanding shows me it's 890. So that's a simple, quick video on using the if function. As I say, I use mine for product shares so that at a glance I could quickly look that, you know, in my, say, June product share, I had X number of customers that were due to pay me X amount of, of money that totaled, you know, X. And then when they paid me, I could tick them off and I could see how much was outstanding at a glance. So I'll just recap. So I'll come back over to the column where I've got the function and I'll double click and here's the function again. So it's basically if C2, which is the checkbox, is true, in other words, it's got something in it, I want D2 to be zero and if it's unchecked, I want it to show the same as in column B2. Don't need those two rows, so I can get rid of those, and I can get rid of those rows, and that's my basic if function. So if Mr. Murray decides to pay me £325, it shows that he owes nothing, and that the outstanding balance of all these invoices is £575. So it's just a quick way of keeping track of money. So 
I hope that was helpful. As I say, that's using the if function in Apple numbers. Please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.